Our armed forces inflict heavy losses on the terrorist groups. Lavrov criticizes the U.S. recognition of the Syrian opposition coalition as running counter to the Geneva Statement. Egyptian national opposition forces continue their city in near al Ittihadiyya presidential palace in rejection of the referendum on the constitution. Good afternoon and welcome to our news for today. Terrorists today detonated two explosive devices planted in the middle of the road at the entrance of Al Qrayat neighborhood in Jaramana in Damascus suburbs, killing one citizen, injuring four others, and causing material damage. A source at Jaramana Surgical Hospital said the hospital received the body of a martyr and four slightly injured citizens who were offered the necessary medical treatment. A Radi hospital, on its part, received a citizen wounded in the terrorist explosion. A member at the Council of Damascus suburbs, Iyad Barakat, said 15 minutes separated the two blasts that took place near Jaramana's second school. In Dareya, in Damascus suburbs, an army unit found a factory for manufacturing explosive devices at the War al Firin Square in the city. In Al Qanawat neighborhood in Damascus, two explosive devices were detonated by terrorists in two cars behind the court premises, wounding one person and causing material damage in the place. A source at the Damascus Police Command said, the terrorists planted one device in a car and another between two cars parked in the place. He added that one pedestrian was injured and material damage was inflicted on a number of cars and shops. In Jurat al Shayyah, in Homs, an army unit has clashed with an armed terrorist group. A source in the governorate said the clashes resulted in killing and injuring several snipers and a machine gunner. Our armed forces carried out a series of operations last night and at dawn today, during which they destroyed several terrorist hideouts that contained arms and ammunition in Idlib suburbs, killing and injuring several gunmen. The operations described by a source in the governorate as having been quick and precise have caused several terrorists to be killed in Sarje, Khan Subul and Saraqib. Among the killed terrorists, Muhammad Abdul Rahim Shahim and Abu Nur al sbai were identified. The source added that an army unit fully destroyed several terrorist hideouts and gatherings in Sarmin, at tarnaba Ain al-Soda, al jinnudiya and al ghassaniya in Jusr al shughur suburbs. The source said our armed forces continue to pursue terrorist groups in al hamidiya and Ma'arat al-Nu'man. In Dar es an army unit clashed with an armed group in Al Jbayle neighborhood, killing several terrorists. An army unit also eliminated several gunmen near Dar es flour mill. The army also killed several terrorists in Al Arfi neighborhood and Port Said Street, as well as in Al Hassan Hatla and Husseiniya villages. Among the terrorists killed was the leader of Al Qassas battalion. Another army unit destroyed an armed armored vehicle and a number of cars with the terrorists inside in Al Mariya village in the governorate's suburbs. The authorities have seized a car loaded with 300 gas bottles for domestic use near Tal Baydar crossing on Al Qamishli Tal Tamar road in Al Hasake suburbs ready to be smuggled. A source in the governorate said the bottles were immediately distributed among citizens in a Derbesiya town and at the regular price.
Russian President Vladimir Putin has stressed that current world developments require decisive measures from Russia. He added that upcoming years would witness a turning point for Russia and the world as a whole, which is being ushered into an age of radical changes. He pointed out that the world would be stronger if it was multipolarized. In his annual message to the Russian Federal Society, broadcast by Russia Today satellite channel, President Putin said there was currently no state in the world capable alone of solving international issues, particularly economic questions. He added that Russia was against seeing any state playing the game unilaterally on the basis of the theory of creative chaos or through sowing the seeds of sedition, and that Moscow insisted on exerting joint unified efforts for the unification of world states and regions. The Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov affirmed that the United States' recognition of the Syrian opposition's coalition as the only representative of the Syrian people is against all agreements listed in Geneva statement, which includes starting a national dialogue between the government and the opposition's representatives. After Lavrov's meeting with the Slovakian Foreign Minister Miroslav Lajcik, he held a press conference in Moscow during which he declared that the United States of America has decided to bet on the military victory of the opposition by recognizing this coalition. He also pointed out that Moscow will call on Washington for clarifications. He added that Russia asked the U.S. for details regarding how it will further deal with this declaration, nothing noting that this is a sharp turn. Lavrov also pointed out that during the recent consultations in Geneva, the U.S. expressed its understanding of the necessity of creating the suitable atmosphere for the Syrian national dialogue with the government's participation. The crisis in Egypt escalates after Morsi's decision to extend voting in a referendum on the constitution as anti-Morsi protests continued in the streets and the main squares. For the sixth consecutive day, the Egyptian national parties continued their rejection of President Mohamed Morsi's decision and of the referendum on the so-called the constitutional declaration, persisting on their sitting in front of the presidential palace in Cairo, calling to cancel the referendum and to overthrow the current regime. The, the Reis -Lilikwan, Reis -Lilikwan. This is a president for the Brotherhood only, and not for all the Egyptians. His fear from the small numbers in this sit-in is what made him do that. If he was a president for all the Egyptians, as he claims, he would not have gotten the tanks or all of these security guards for him in front of 50 or 60 people. Mercy has lost his legitimacy. Anger increased among Egyptians as Morsi made a decision to extend voting in the referendum for two phases. The decision aggravated the crisis as protesters continued their sitting in Al Tahrir Square and some roads were blocked by public committees at the entrances and exits of the square to guard those who are camped against any possible attacks by the Muslim Brotherhoods, who used live bullets as well as white weapons and stones injuring many people. Protesters outside the presidential palace had organized a march towards Al Tahrir Square to mobilize demonstrators and to escalate their anti Morsi protests. Demonstrators held the Egyptian flags and chanted slogans, while clashes broke out between police and angry demonstrators who tried to break into the subway station of Sadat and to stop the train movement by standing on the railroad tracks. In a new racist and provocative escalation of attacks against Islamic and Christian holy places in occupied Al-Quds, settlers stormed into Al-Aqsa Mosque. Palestinian sources said that about 70 settlers broke into the mosque on two batches from the gate of Al-Maghariba, guarded by the Israeli forces of occupation, who tightened their pressure on the Students of Science project, which is sponsored by Foundation of Construction of Al-Aqsa and the Holy Places. Israeli settlers also attacked the monastery of Wadi Salib in Jerusalem, and they wrote on the world's racist slogans, which are offensive to both Christians and Muslims. 
With this, we conclude our news bulletin for today. Thank you for watching. For more information about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy.